Welcome to the Backyard Professor Recordings videos. Uh, I am so excited. We're just about two and a half hours away from having Colby Townsend on a live stream today at noon Mountain Time in the United States. Colby has two bachelor degrees. He has two master degrees, and he is a double PhD student right now. And I am so thrilled to be able to have him on my show very soon here. We are going to talk about the book of Enoch. And I want to give you a heads up in this brief video um, before I get him on live. Uh, Colby has shared with me a lot of his research and writings materials, his book reviews, his texts, some of the very interesting work that he is working on now. And I am deeply impressed with this man. He's a young man. He's 27, I believe, 28. And man, is he a go-getter. We're going to have an opportunity to be in the presence of a world-renowned scholar someday. So I am very excited. I spent the morning this morning. <laughs> it's a very cold morning, hence my blanket. I'm not even dressed yet. I'm so excited to have Colby. I've got to do a preface video, but uh, I spent my morning finding Hugh Nibley's book, Enoch the Prophet. We are going to talk about the books of Enoch and the availability of Enoch to Joseph Smith. Nib and, and Colby doesn't want to be responding to the apologetic. He's not into refuting the apologists. He is much more interesting in, in showing the historical scholarship. And, and I agree with him in large part. And, and that is how I'm going to let him uh, be in my interview and video. It's perfectly fine by me. I'm going to preface our live session with this short brief video of Hugh Nibley's apologetic. He set it up such that now he wrote a series of articles in the Ensign on a strange thing in the land, the return of the book of Enoch, and then Deseret book and farms put it together in a book form, Enoch the prophet. And on pages 101, 102, 103, etc., Nibley is describing the issues of how the book of Enoch began to be found throughout the Middle Ages. And there was a gentleman named Ludolf who pronounced the search for Enoch to have been a subject richly productive of criticism and theological discussion. But once Berlin had spoken, the idea that a book of Enoch existed in Ethiopia was completely abandoned and no one gave it another thought. As this is on page 102, as one scholar observed with relief as late as 1870. But when Job Ludoff went afterwards to Paris to the Royal Library, he found it, the Enoch manuscript, to be a fabulous and silly production. In consequence of this disappointment, the idea of recovering it in Ethiopia was abandoned. So on and so forth. Because Nibley needed to distance the availability of the Enoch texts from Joseph Smith having access to them, in order to produce his Mormon apologetic for the Enoch section in the Book of Moses of the Pearl of Great Price, which was a revelation given to Joseph Smith when he was doing his translation of Genesis in the Bible, the Joseph Smith translation. Nibley wants to create a gap, and because he did not want to find Enoch available to Joseph Smith, then Hugh Nibley, the great Mormon scholar, did not find Enoch was available to Joseph Smith. This was his apologetic. New scholarship and new research has demonstrated how outdated and incorrect 
Hugh Nibley's apologetic is and was. So I am very, very excited. I wanted to give you guys a heads up on this because this is significant. This year, I'm going to be utilizing more scholars in my shows and their research and scholarship to discuss the New Testament. In the process, of course, we're going to be talking about the Old Testament, the Hebrew, the Masoretic text, the ancient Greek translation of the Septuagint. I will be utilizing biblical scholars, the likes of James D. Tabor, an on-the-ground archaeologist, historian, linguist. He has some fantastic materials I wish to utilize. I will be utilizing Colby Townsend. I've already told him so, and we've agreed we're going to do many, many shows together. I'm excited. I will have Dr. Charles Harrell back. Uh, hopefully later this month, if not several times in January, to talk about his breakthrough text, This Is My Doctrine, and we will be exploring many aspects of the scriptures. I will focus on the New Testament because that's what the church is doing, and I will utilize the best of New Testament scholarship as well. I just, I really wanted to give you guys a heads up, and I know it's early morning, but uh, it's all good. Um, Colby and I are going to be doing many pre-recordings as well, and I will furnish those to the internet as I have time, through time, and we are, you are in for a treat, I am in for a treat, so I hope to see you all there on this fabulous opportunity to ask questions of a genuine scholar of Joseph Smith's era and the scriptures. I mean, that's the best of all worlds as far as I'm concerned. I will see you guys soon.